Hey everyone, this is the Wealth Building Educator here for another episode. Today, I'm going to be doing a reaction video to a call into the Dave Ramsey show. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to Kayla in Indianapolis, Indiana. What's up, Kayla? How are you doing? Hi, guys. How are you? Great. What's up? So, hopefully you guys don't shred me too hard for this. Oh, um, we're your friend. I know. So, we did the right thing. We sold our car that we were making payments on. We sold it to Carvana, um, and they gave us about 8200 And then we put that towards uh, another used car, a beater, as they would call it. So we ended up spending about 5800 out the door on this Nissan Armada. Uh, it looked great on the outside. We had test driven it and it was doing all right, um, except the check engine light was on. My okay, so real quick, they obviously are following the Dave Ramsey plan and the Dave Ramsey plan causes you to get intentional with your money and it, it wants you to get gazelle intense. And gazelle intensity basically looks like what Dave would call selling so much stuff that the kids think they're next. And that sounds like what this young lady is doing and they sell a vehicle and they sell it to Carvana and they net approximately $8,200 from that sale. Then they go to a dealership and purchase what they refer to as a beater, a Nissan Armada. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe she said it was about 5,600 out the door. So let's go ahead and see what else she has to say about the situation. My husband asked about it, and the guy said it was a battery, and he could get it off. So um, I drove it home. It drove a little, you know, like a used car. And so we called about it the next morning, and it wouldn't even start. So we called the guy. He said, take it to a mechanic, and he would work out a deal with us on getting it fixed. So before we continue the video, let's just kind of mention how they actually bought the Armada that had a check engine light on the vehicle already. And the dealer, the salesperson, convinced them that they could check into it, but they purchased the vehicle and took the vehicle home. And then they contacted the dealer the next day to let them know that the vehicle had been kind of acting up. But then it didn't start whatsoever. Red flag number one was the check engine light. Everybody knows a check engine light isn't necessarily a good thing. It doesn't always have to be a major thing but it's never a, a good thing. So let's continue. That sounded fishy to me. My husband was like, okay, so we took it to the mechanic. It turns out the subframe is completely ruined. There's a hole in the exhaust pipe that's leaking water onto the subframe, making it even worse, just terrible to drive, unsafe. Um, and he's just told us it's completely toast. toast. So my husband went into the dealership today talked to them and he laughed him out of the dealership basically. Do we have any room to do them? I mean, what can we do? Like I'm putting my trust in God fully and I, I know it's gonna be all right, but I'm, I'm a little curious and I wanna see if we have any room to do anything about this. Oh, okay. So there's no way we're gonna shred you over this. And before these guys even answer the question, I will say, because I sold cars for a little while as I after I dropped out of college for about a year and a half. And I will say that there's something called as is. There's an as is part of the contract where you are accepting responsibility for that vehicle. It doesn't necessarily matter what was said or what was done, whatever is in that contract. And if it includes the as is provision, then you are responsible for that. So I am assuming they're going to say something about being able to sue but let's let's see what they say okay this this stinks i'm sorry yeah we're out about 5800 bucks yeah. the guy told us he inspected it then he told us he didn't my husband recorded him saying he did get it inspected but he couldn't find the inspection report somehow so you can go to small claims court you can okay. sue him and uh, i can't give you legal advice but you can contact right, the right. lawyer in your local area and go down that road if you'd like to. So let's just discuss small claims court briefly. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you can sue up to $5,000 in the small claims court. Unfortunately, there is no guarantee. So you can sue anybody. 
but there's no guarantee that you will get get your money back. And, and even if she is able to get some money back, of course, the inconvenience of this particular situation is going to kind of, you know, hinder the family. It It's not an easy process. It's going to be a months long process, if not longer. So they are going to have to be able to prove that they, they were absolutely lied to or they were conned into this. And even then, the fact that they have been as is agreement would tell me that it would be very difficult to, to get, get money back. But let's continue the video. Okay. Um, I would recommend adding up or getting some really clear um, written, <laughs> right? You've learned the importance of that. Clear written um, a written contract about what legal advice is going to cost, what going to small claims court would look like, what settling would look like. I mean, um, I don't know what the uh, recording laws are in Indianapolis. Is it a one-party state or two-party state? It, right? it is a one-party state. Okay, okay. So all, all that to say is you can go down that road. It's not – maybe he gets a, a letter, a demand letter from an attorney, and he writes you a check and gives you your money back. Let, let me also say this. So she did mention recording the guy saying he had it inspected. That could be true. The fact that he had it inspected doesn't necessarily mean that he he lied about the condition. Literally, I have seen it before where you purchase a vehicle, not even a relatively old vehicle, but purchase a vehicle that might be a few years old. And it's OK when you drive it off the lot. But then the next day or a week later, it breaks down. So just because she has them on video or on audio admitting to having a vehicle inspected, that doesn't mean that he he lied about it or he knew something was going on with the vehicle. Maybe that's what happens. Probably not. That's what I've read usually would happen if he were found to be in the wrong. Probably not. Okay. Um, let me just say, if I'm you, yes, I, I've got buddies who are attorneys. I worked at law school for years, so I would have somebody write a letter, and I'd pay them, and they would write a letter and see what happens there. Okay. Um, okay. I also would be prepared, both spiritually and psychologically and emotionally, for this right. to be a painful $5,800 lesson. Yeah. That um, we, we, you knew driving that car off the lot and something wasn't right in it. And right, it was right. a big car and armadas are cool and they're big and we got a good deal on it. And now you know I'm never driving a car off the lot with a check engine light on. I'm never driving a car off the lot without an inspection in my hand. I'm never right. So you've learned all these things. And if you look on the uh, on the arc of your life, how old are you? Uh, I'm going to be 30 in September. Okay. In 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. $5,800 for the lesson you've learned here, because this is going to impact how you buy a house. It's going to impact how you, wh how your kids go to college. It's going to impact everything, because you learned a hard lesson here. Um, and everyone I know has made them. Dave's made them with millions, right? You've made one with $5,800. This will be a lesson that pays for itself over and over and over again. I don't want you to beat yourself up over this, okay? Yeah. I'm kind of, I know you are. I've you know, cried out yeah. today because this sucks. We 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 only have twenty two hundred in our savings because we're in financial peace right now. Yes, and you know, we and you and your husband, y'all are good people. You would never do this to somebody. Okay, I had to stop that. Stop sharing that video. So, just a few things. Obviously, there are quite a few lessons to be learned in this particular video. As I said, I sold cars and, and I didn't necessarily know as a salesperson the quality of the vehicles that I sold. When people would come in and they would ask for a used vehicle, I would take them to whatever, you know, I would get that, I would take, get an inventory, a list of the things that they want or need in a vehicle. And I would search the lot and figure out what we had. I didn't necessarily know. I, I know that when you take trade-ins and things like that, you look over the vehicle, but you don't necessarily do a full inspection. That's why they do things as is. So they, they take the trade-in and then they, they list it back for sale. And you don't always know the, the condition of that particular vehicle. So it's possible that the salesperson 
flat out lied about it, about the condition of the vehicle, it's possible that they had no idea. And let me also say that even with new vehicles, I, I sold a lemon new vehicle. Of course, I didn't expect or anticipate a new vehicle to be a lemon, but it was a lemon. So vehicles are very weird. And one of the most frustrating thing that you can ever do is to shop for a vehicle. I was talking to my buddy Marcus from Black Mary Debt Free about his recent vehicle experience at the dealership. He hates it as well. So we were able to kind of connect when we discuss how we both hated going to the dealership because you don't know what you're getting. And it's just such a frustrating experience and one that I would personally prefer not to ever have to do, but I know it's one of those necessary evils is going to the dealership, right? So that is that is one thing. A, a very expensive lesson that they have to learn as a family or, and that they have learned is that you do not drive a vehicle off the lot that has a check engine light. You know, when you are going to purchase a vehicle, the very first thing you have to do, regardless if it's a one-year-old vehicle that's under warranty or if it's a 15-year-old vehicle, you have to take a trusted mechanic with you to get that vehicle checked out. Every time I purchase a vehicle, I take a mechanic with me, usually pay around $50, $40 to $50 each vehicle that they inspect. Of course, you might have a situation where this vehicle is only five years old. So you figure, hey, this is a Camry, this is a, a core. It should be fine to run for 20 years, but you don't know what is lying in wait. You have no idea some of the things that might be going on with that particular vehicle. So you just go without a mechanic because you think everything's going to be okay. So you want to save your little 40, 50, $60. And then a month later, something happens. Every vehicle that I've taken my mechanic with me, whether it's a five-year-old vehicle or a 12-year-old vehicle, those vehicles have lasted me for as long as I, I could have hoped. I never had one breakdown on me. The only reason I got rid of them or the only way I parted with those vehicles was because I sold them for another vehicle. So I have bought multiple vehicles over the past 10, 15 years, and I have always taken a mechanic with me. And no, let me take that back. I didn't take a mechanic with me one time and I bought a Mercury Mountaineer and I had a few issues with that particular vehicle. So that's why I had, you know, I speak from experience too. And this was years ago. This was after, maybe, a, maybe about 12 years ago. Always take a mechanic with you, especially if you see that there's a check engine light. At that point, then had you not brought a mechanic with you, now you say, hey, hold on, let's hold this deal. I want to bring my mechanic with me. Then if they kind of balk or hesitate at that, then you know something is going on. So the lesson that they learned clearly here was to never purchase a vehicle with a check engine light and never go to purchase a vehicle without a mechanic. Now, let me also talk about the money and marriage thing. So just kind of when you when you listen to the dynamics and when you listen to the call, of course, she has her side of the story and the husband will have his side of the story. As the leader of my household, as the head of household, you know, I, I will I will put the blame on the the husband here because by the sound of things, it, it, it looks like he was the one that was pushing more for this particular vehicle. And he was the one who kind of blew off the fact that it was a check engine light. He bought the he bought the salesperson's pitch that you know it, it'll be okay, they could bring it in tomorrow to get it checked out. He was okay with it. And I take responsibilities for the mistakes that I have made and my family has made. I, I put it all on me because I, I, you know, I'm the head of household and I, I also put it on him as well. So that will probably lead to some, quite a few uncomfortable conversations because as the guy said in the video, you know, it, it will affect everything. Just thinking about my mindset that I have when I think about money, I'm always thinking about compound interest. So let's look at that $5,800 in a long term. I don't even want to think about how much it will be if you put it in an index fund and just let it sit for 15, or 20, or 30 years. And if they ever run that through a calculator, they are going to regret it so much. They're going to be beating themselves up and probably won't be able to stop. So this is going to be a very, very high cost lesson that they're going to learn. And we have all learned them. 
I will say if it is a lesson that catapults them to another threshold of financial wellness or, you know, being able to understand finances at another level, maybe it's worth it because we, a lot of us have made those kind of mistakes. So if it makes them more financially literate, maybe it was a valuable lesson. Maybe it, you can't just look at the fact that it was $5,800. $5,800 is a lot of money, however you cut it. However you cut it, $5,800 is a lot of money. So now let me listen, let me discuss the, the Dave Ramsey part of this whole thing. We talk about gazelle intensity. Gazelle intensity, digging your hole, get digging out of the hole you're in, you know, getting yourself out of debt, going, going hard, going hard in the paint, you know? And that is one of the issues I sometimes have with Dave Ramsey. He motivates people to go crazy and get out of debt and become debt free and, and take control of your finances. Sometimes I think that people go too hard and they actually end up costing themselves. And this is a very, very, you know, expensive lesson that they learn. And this is a situation where they cost themselves quite a bit of money by going to gazelle intense. You know, I understand when Dave Ramsey says, hey, you, you pay off these credit cards, pay them off as soon as possible. I understand what he's telling people to keep your the value of your cars less than 50% of, of your household income. I understand he tells people to pay cash for vehicles or, or just try to hurry up and pay them off. I understand these things totally as my wife and I went through the program and we, you know, we got ourselves from under this massive debt burden and we had to thank his program for being able to do that. On the flip side, and I always have some kind of devil's advocate when it comes to Dave Ramsey, particularly with the credit cards, but I'm not going to go there today. But on the flip side, you have a situation where you have two fully functioning vehicles, two reliable vehicles, and I don't know what the payment was on them, but they traded that in to try to become gazelle intense and, and quickly get out of debt to get what she even referred to as a beater and what Dave Ramsey refers to as a beater. And in this particular situation, it actually was a beater, a beater that broke down, that's gonna end up costing them thousands of dollars. Imagine them even going to get it fixed, however much that costs, and then it breaks down again. So they go from reliable vehicles to an unreliable vehicle that they, is, probably not worth much at all now. So you're out $5,800 because you were trying to do the right thing. And now their emergency fund is, is low. See, I, I've, I have an issue sometimes. I hear Dave Ramsey tell people to sell their $15,000 car and go buy a $2,000 car because I've heard these situations happen before where they have a reliable vehicle that gets them from point A to point B just all they have to do is keep paying it off, but he's, he encourages them to, to sell the reliable vehicle and get a piece of junk and the piece of junk actually sets them back. So these things, they only work when they work. They only work when they work, you know? So I, I think that that's a very, you know, valuable call for anybody. I want you all to be out of debt. I want you all to do the things you need to do in order to, to get out of debt, and I want you to be gazelle intense. At the same time, you have to use, you have to use common sense. You have to completely analyze the situation. Don't get, you know, overly excited and irrational to where you are going to go out there and buy a vehicle without having it inspected. And what's even worse is to buy a vehicle that actually comes with a check engine light on. You know, that is not what gazelle intensity should be all about. Gazelle intensity really should be about sitting down with your spouse, working on getting on the same page, doing a budget, doing the debt snowball, doing the debt avalanche, and doing the things you need to do to put your family in a better long-term financial situation. Obviously, the short-term segments will make up the long-term success, but you just cannot fumble the bag like this. You, that's going to be the biggest L that 
they ever take in their lives. Hopefully it is the big, biggest L they ever take. Hopefully they don't take any more L's like that because that's going to be a devastating blow to their financial situation. They will recover from it, but it's something that they will always, always have in the back of their heads. And I feel bad for them because they were truly trying to do the right thing. And unfortunately, this, this bit them in the rear end and they're going to have to learn from it. But guys, I really appreciate the support that you continue to give. We are at a number of subscribers that two months ago, I never would have ever imagined even a year ago when I started the channel, it was really just a little hobby that I wanted to do just to start having these uncomfortable conversations about money and bringing awareness to multiple professions and, and multiple communities. So I appreciate you all for continuing to support me. Please like and share the content. We're gonna continue to get better with the content. We're gonna continue to push out more and more videos. I have some really good things coming up and we're definitely gonna be working on the quality of the videos as well. Like I said, it was just a hobby last year. I just do it from a, a laptop, but we're gonna be working on making this a more enjoyable experience for everybody. So once again, please, like share and subscribe if you have not already done so okay once again it's the wealth building educator and we're going to continue to build wealth together thank you all for the support i'm out